Hey everyone, Scott Davenport here. In this Luminar video, we're going to forget about presets and go directly into just working with sliders straight away and craft our image from the ground up. Maybe sometimes you don't find a preset that works for you, or maybe you just like building your image from the first step all the way to the end in your own custom manner. Well, Luminar will let you do that, and let's dive in with this photo here. I've got this uh, misty day uh, at the Oregon coast, and we're going to build this from the ground up. So I'm going to open up our filters tab, and I will choose the landscape workspace because that's going to have a fair number of the sliders that I want. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set my white balance. And so I want to pick something that's kind of a neutralish gray, kind of out here in the, the mid ground there. Pick something like that. That should help to warm it up a little bit. That's good. And that's okay. This was a very gray day. I expect to have a lot of gray tones, but I get to change that when I start getting into other sliders. So exposure, let's check our histogram. Exposure looks pretty good. I might eke up the, uh, the whites and the highlights a little bit. So let's keep the, the, uh, the histogram open here for just a minute. We'll add a little contrast. And uh, let's check out Smart Tone and see what that does. I'm just experimenting here with a few of the values just to see what this is doing to the image. That's looking pretty good there. Bring in those highlights to so recover some of that detail up in the sky. We'll open up our shadows a little bit. I want to see some of the detail in those rocks on the lower left side. And so not too much. I want those to stay dark, but I want to see the details. I don't want to lose things. White point, let's, uh, let's press our J key. We've got a little bit of clipping right there, and that's okay. So I'm not gonna change the whites, but uh, and I also have a tiny bit right down here in the lower corner of shadow clipping. I'm also okay with that. Those are not areas that have important detail, and so having a little bit of clipping in the photo, that's all right. And the J key will show you the clipping. So J, one more time, show the clipping. Press it again to hide it away. Now the next thing I want to do is get those greens and these mosses coming up more. So I have the foliage enhancer. That was a part of the landscape workspace. Let's give that a healthy boost, maybe even a little bit more. Let's just go ahead and click around here a little bit until we land on something that, that feels pretty good. That's feeling good. That's a much nicer green tone there. Great. Now for detail, I'm going to add some clarity. Again, we're just going to click around here a little bit. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to lose the misty feeling. And there's, um, I've actually, I'll look at that with structure to add a little bit more in here. And I, this will be good. I want to show you a really neat feature of Luminar that you can do on the individual filter level. So here, I'm going to add some structure. Now, the idea is I want to add structure into those rocks. So let's start adding some structure here. Um, that's a good amount. That's a good amount for the rocks. But what happens is the ocean's getting a little bit of that structure and the rest of the clouds too. I don't really want that to happen. So Luminar's got this nice feature. I can add a mask right to the individual filter. So I'm just going to right click and I can say mask and I'm going to add a luminosity mask. Now what the luminosity mask is going to do is it's going to create a mask based on the tones of the image. So dark areas will not get the structure and light areas will and you know the brightest parts will get full structure and the darkest parts get none that'll end up being the exact opposite of what i want so if i toggle the structure off and on kind of watch the sky area like maybe around here in the center of the the photo no structure you can see i've lost a lot of that detail structure i actually want the exact opposite i want to have that structure on my rocks so i can right click on the mask and say invert it. And so now it'll flip it all around. And with just a couple of clicks, I've targeted this structure to just the areas that I want. That's a really nice feature. And I didn't have to go into layering. I can still work with more or less global adjustments here. And we'll finish this one, this off here. Um, well, I think I'm gonna finish global processing. So a way that I like to approach things with Luminar, and we're gonna get into adjustment layers in just a bit, is I'll start with all the global things, things that I want to do all across the board. And uh, the structure one was a little bit of a, uh, a shortcut where I could certainly add a different layer and do structure selectively. 
But when it comes to an easy mask selection like that, I can do that with just that right click. But I do want to add a little bit of glow here. So I'm going to go to the filters and add, let's add a soft glow. That's one of my favorites. And we'll just add a small amount of it. And what soft glow does is it really targets the more highlight areas and adds a little diffuse glow to it. And so that's, that's helping keep this sky soft and it's not affecting the rocks too much. All right, from here, I think what I want to do next is just add a little more exposure to the lower left corner here to bring those rocks open up a little bit and a little more structure in that area as well. So since that's going to be a more localized change and a localized set of adjustments, I'm going to create a new image layer to do that. So let's hide our histogram and open up our filters panel, which is right here. Sorry, filters layers panel, which is right here. And I'll press plus and I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. Now what a new adjustment layer is, it's a whole nother set of filters. I can choose a pre-existing workspace of all the filters I might like or any I've created myself. Or I can add new ones, but this is a whole other set of filters that I can work with individually, as a group, do any type of masking that I want, and it's not going to affect anything that we've done previously. That's on a different adjustment layer, which will be insulated from anything we do here. And I want to start with, uh, with some tone. I mentioned exposure. And so I'm going to up the exposure a little bit. Now, this is affecting the whole scene right now. I'm only paying attention to the rocks. That's probably a little bit too much. So I'll make that a yeah, quarter or so. Then I'll grab the gradient masking tool and stretch this out and kind of get a decent fade on it. So really only affecting this little corner here and down into this area. So now as I go up to the entire layer here, I can toggle off and on. Now that's the same thing as just this single uh, single filter here, right? the tone filter. I'm just adding a little bit of exposure here, opening up those shadows a little bit more. I want to go further. I want to do more to that corner. I mentioned structure. Let's add some more detail here. So let's go to the detail selection here and let's find ourselves structure. There we go. And we'll just add a touch more. I don't want to go too much. I don't want to make it too, uh, too crunchy. But now before and after, before, after, you can see it lightening up here, adding some richness to the, the shadows. And that's only affecting this corner because I have this mask applied to the entire layer, right? This up here that we did here. So my mask is only affecting these two filters. And if I were to add more and more filters on this particular layer, the same thing would happen. I'd only be working in this one particular corner. So that's how I like to use adjustment layers is to group them together when I'm working on different areas of my photo. All right, now I'm going to turn my attention to the sky, bring a little more of those details. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And since I'm going to be working on a different section of the photo, that's why I want another adjustment layer. Let's add dehaze. And right now I'm just adjusting dehaze and paying attention to the sky. I don't want to dehaze the entire photo, just the sky. So as I make the adjustments, I'm just paying attention to the clouds. Once I've got a good look on the clouds dialed in, I'll grab that gradient tool again and we'll mask and spin that around. So we're getting that dehaze action. I can show where we're applying the mask. So the red area, or if you look at your mask icon, white, we're dehazing and in this case on the preview, blank, or on the mask, dark, we are not dehazing. And I really just want this in the sky, so I'll adjust this around a little bit. Nice fade. Let's turn that off and see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. We'll apply that mask. And now I've got a nice dehaze happening to the sky before and after. Just bringing back a little bit more of these details. These are all subtle touches and that tends to be my, my particular workflow. I do a series of small subtle touches and they add up in the end. And speaking of adding up, the last thing we'll do is we'll do a vignette. Now since I have masks on these layers, I don't want to add a vignette to any of these workspaces that have filters 
because I'll then only be vignetting portions of the image. So I'll add one more adjustment layer and all I really want for this, I think it's in the creative section. There we go, vignette. And how I like to work with vignettes, I'll take the feather all the way down and I'll take the amount down very, very far so I can see the edge of the vignette. And now I'll adjust the size and the roundness, maybe make it kind of like, kind of like that. Um, make it a little bit bigger. I don't want to darken my uh, my corners too much, especially that lower left corner where we took a lot of efforts to open those shadows back up. Then I can bring my feather back and then finally dial in the amount to something that looks good. And this is a, a, a tiny one, right? Before, after. Really subtle just at the corners. And again, that tends to be how I like my photos, a little bit subtle. So that is how we use adjustment layers in series to build up a set of filters, stack them up on top of one another, and really craft an image with Luminar. So uh, again, how I like to work with the adjustment layers is to start by doing all of your global adjustments and do that in a single layer, and then look at different regions of your photo and work on those regions, each in their own adjustment layer. And when they're all added up, you end up with something really, really nice.